So I'm gonna do a voiceover on this video because I don't know, it might be boring to just watch this painting with some music because I don't think it's that good. But this is me painting my husband. Trying to, I'm really trying to get into the techniques of really just painting the shadows and the highlights first, or not necessarily the highlights, but the, the different forms of the shadows and the lights to, to get that understanding of the, the form of everything first. Hey, um, instead of just like trying to go in with detail, like immediately start drawing the eyes and the nose and the mouth, I'm really trying to force myself to connect shadows. So you see how like his nose, mouth, and hair are all in shadow. I really should have just done one big shadow shape for the nose and the mouth and the, the hair. But I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. So I went in with a little bit of details just to get like the placement, I guess, of where everything is. I did the shadows for the eyes and the under part of the nose. And then I drew where the lips would be. And I don't know why I made it this detailed this early on. This is what I'm trying to get away from. But I think I, I still worked better with the shadows and lights on this painting than a lot of other paintings. So this is just me getting a rough sketch, trying to get the proportions right of where everything's gonna go. Um, I'm not drawing the background to this picture, just him. And now I think I'm gonna start, see, I'm trying to get the proportions just right and really, you really should just go in with the shadows and then you can do the details after. If you get the if you get the proportions right of the shadows, then you should already be able to start seeing the form and then you could definitely put in the details afterward. I had to shut my window because I live on the main street and these cars are so loud. Uh, so I started blocking in the hair shadow because that's the darkest shadow, that's another thing. I think that's why I didn't connect the face to the hair because the hair is much, much darker. But I really, next time I want to just do like one tone for the shadows, one tone for the lights, and then work in those different tones. But right now I'm working in the darkest shadow, which is the hair, because I want to put up my darkest color down first and then probably just leave my canvas for the lightest color so I have a reference point because everything else I know will be lighter than this. So I'm putting in the darkest shadows first. Oh, see, yeah, I just connected it to the face, just making it all one big shadow. I really should have just filled in those lips too, because those lips are all in shadow. Putting in the shadows for the eyeballs, so you can already see the form of the face starting. He's looking real macho. <laughs> I never paint guys, unless it's my husband, honestly. Leaving that little highlight on the cheek. And then this looks like it's a different tone that I'm putting in here. It's a little bit lighter. And the other part of the hair, because that is part of the darkest shadow. And it seems like I made it just a little bit lighter because I want it to seem like the light is passing through on that side because the light is coming from the right side. There's my little baby walking around. And now I'm going in with some skin tones. And so this is supposed to be the lightest part of the face. And I, I did it a little too dark and I ended up making it lighter because I think it needs to be more of like closer to the canvas color, like pretty, pretty light yellow. But I'm just, see, I'm just blocking in that whole side with that color. I'm not worrying about form or anything. I just want to get in um, a base tone for everything. And then I come in with a little bit darker color because the other side is more in shadow, the nose is in shadow, and then that's darker on the left side because the right side is the side that has light on it. So it's gonna be the lighter side. So this whole time that I'm just blocking in some shapes, I'm still thinking about the form and the placement. So. 
I, you see how I kind of carved out the cheekbone and the nose and the forehead. It's already taking form just with a few simple shapes. It was really a struggle filming this, by the way. If it seems like I'm cutting some parts out, it's because my head got in the way and you're just seeing straight back of my head. So I figured there's no point in leaving that in the video. And now I noticed the eyebrows are pretty dark too. So I'm locking those in as one of the darkest colors on on this painting. Look at my baby, she's so cute. Meow. She's not baby. That's my cat next to me right now. <laughs> she always has to be with me. Um, sculpting out the under part of the nose. So the second most darkest point part of this painting is underneath the nose and the bottom half of the nose and of course the nostrils are even darker so i'm going into that next darkest shadow and just sculpting it even more and making all of these shadow areas i already made even darker to help with the contrast um so right here you can tell that the nose is too low so this is why I really should have just got in with shadow first, because if I would have got the height of the shadow correct, then I wouldn't have done all this detail on the nose and then have to fix it, because I'm going to have to go back in and move that nose up because it's way too close to the mouth. But the eyes were, they were already in a good position, so I'm going in with more detail, drawing in the shadows for the, the pupils. And that shadow, that big shadow that's on the left part of the eye. And just trying to get the proportions right on that. It was kind of hard to get these eyes done just because this angle was a little weird, like underneath the chin, but almost shows the whole face still. I didn't want it to look like it was coming straight on. So it was kind of like a challenge for me. Then I'm putting in this brightest highlight right next to the eyebrow i really like that contrast right there it takes out the edge of the eyebrow you can't even see it and then i'm bringing in the side of this face and i don't want to make it too strong because in the picture it almost looks like the side of the face blends in with the shadow and even though like i can make the face and the hair different colors i want them to be the same darkness i want them to have the same value i want them to almost blend together even if one's like red and one's purple so i'm making that shadow underneath the chin pretty dark i honestly think i did that a little too dark and coming in and shaping the face with the hair and then blending out the edges so they're not so harsh see i think this is where i noticed yeah the nose was way too low so I just wiped it off it was still wet because I'm working with oil and I just moved it up put in some eye bags re-sculpted the what is that the bridge of the nose and then that what is that under part where the septum um and just re, re put in those nostrils in there and now I'm spending more time to get it right now because I have I know I have the placement right now I really want to get the shape of the nose down. I like these colors, these reds and pinks that I'm using. It's a very warm painting. I love warm colors, um, especially for skin tones. It just makes you look so alive. Um, so, and, and then I noticed the, that that side of the face wasn't uh, bright enough. So I'm going in with white. And I probably should have wiped away some of that other color because it kind of just blended in. And I don't want to blend in. That's another thing I'm trying to get better at instead of grabbing like some white and mixing it in with the color that's already there. I want to grab the color that I need and put it on top of the other color so it doesn't blend but I'm actually laying down the color that I need. But it looks really nice now. You can really see the form of that side of the face and the eyeball. The eye socket it really is starting to look like an eye socket now i'm going in and just darkening up the eyeballs gotta get them as dark as those eyebrows because they are both just as dark as each other and they're also as dark as the hair so i need to make the hair darker 
now you can kind of see the direction of the face it does look like it's more of an under view because I can see more of the area underneath the nose and the nose is closer to the eyes that makes it, that's what makes it look like an under view when the nose is way closer to the eyes and if you look at the picture the shadow on the nose is right underneath the shadow of the eyes so if I would have started out with the shadows first that's how I could have knew how, is those, those shadows are almost touching I'm going into the lips and I'm just going in with some color right off the bat even though those lips should have already had some shadow on them but it's okay going in immediately with detail this is what I need to avoid I should have just shaded the darks and the lights but I am going in with some tones already but you know they they didn't come out bad so I'm not even mad because they're probably my favorite part of the painting I love his lips they're just so fun to draw because they're such a unique shape see I put in all the harsh shapes and then I kind of blended them all together just to give a more subtle effect more lifelike effect I wasn't trying to go too painterly with this um, yeah just putting in more shadow realizing like at this point I think when I go through a painting I notice what needs to be darker what needs to be lighter and then obviously I'm like oh the eye is too big need to make it a little bit smaller or it's too small need to drag out the left corner or something but as I'm changing the shape of things, I'm also changing the intensity and the brightness, the darkness of the color. <clears throat> That's what's kind of hard is trying to look at your canvas and seeing, oh, well, there's a magenta there, but I need more of like a corally color, but still dark. So that's really when experience of color mixing comes in color mixing is really really hard and that's something that i really need to work on um see i put in like pretty much orange for that highlight in the hair because when light passes through brown hair it looks kind of like golden kind of like when light like the sunlight is on brown eyes it looks kind of like caramel so I put that color in there so it looks like the sun is coming from behind him and passing through. I know in the picture it looks pretty much white, but I wanted to give it that effect of the sun because that's what happens when it passes through and I think that, that looks really cool, that orange color. Looks, it gets a nice little pop. I definitely made that shadow on the cheek too dark at first, but it's looking better now. It's looking more like a, a shadow of the skin tone. And it got that orange pop underneath the chin. I don't know where all these orange colors are coming from, but in the picture, if you see underneath the chin and under the nose are pretty orange. <clears throat> and I have, of course I have that pop of orange on the lip. It's not really in the picture, but I wanted it to kind of look like the light was passing through the lip as well because I, I really like that I think it brought like cohesion to the painting to have the light like passing through that whole side of the face and I just made the hair darker on that side because it of course it needed to be darker it wasn't dark enough because that's supposed to be the darkest point in the painting and as you can see I didn't really have a hard edge on that left cheekbone because it is almost the same tone as the hair Oh, it's looking cute you can really see the form and the light and the shape of the painting but yeah soft cheekbone edge also because it's not a focal point for me so I don't need it to have a sharp edge I always would rather focus on like the eyes nose and mouth just putting in some random colors that are not in the picture just put in some blues because I figured it was looking a little a little all orangey and then I also wanted to do like a bluish green background so I knew if it has that background then it's gonna have it's gonna have some like light bouncing off of the background so I put blue in there to show maybe like a reflection of the background light and now I'm just like adding details fixing some colors I made that light brighter 
and a little more yellow so it looks like some warm light just adding details perfecting everything this is where I want my hard edges to show on my focal points so obviously that's the lips around the nostrils and the eyeballs and the eyelashes now um, I didn't record the background process sorry I was too lazy but yeah here it is